that right? Yeah. I was making sure before Denise hollered at me again. Mark chapter 5. Read the story of the account. Hmm. I'll leave that in the car. I don't know. I walked over. Denise and I walked over to speak to Rebecca, and I forgot to take it. Now, Mark chapter 5. Read the story tonight. The good Lord would help us on uh, the woman with the issue of blood, beginning in verse 21. And we want to look at one verse basically in that chapter, but we're going to read a, a few verses just to familiarize us with uh, the condition of this woman. Mark chapter 5 and verse number 21. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogues, Jairus by name. When he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come, and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but grew rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Straightway I shall be whole. Straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. And Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for the reading of your word. We thank you tonight, Lord, for each one that's made their way out inside and out. Lord, we thank you for the singing. We thank you for the spirit. We thank you for all that you do for us. Guide us and help us, Lord. Guard our lips. Father, I pray, God, you just bless your word and help your servant. And help us to say, Lord, that that would be pleasing and needful. And we'll praise you for what you do. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Amen. I've always cherished this story. I, I guess it's one of my favorite in the Word of God. This woman and the, uh, the, the, the trouble that she had. Uh, I guess that in some ways that I can associate uh, with this woman because I am a kind of person to where oftentimes that I have to get pretty low before I will ask for help. And you can call it stubborn, you can call it pride, you can call it whatever you want to, uh, but, uh, you know, and you, you get to the point. And so many times in my life, boy, I thank God, hallelujah, I thank Him for every time that I have been, now I'm, I'm not talking about having an issue of blood like this woman had, but I'm talking about a great need, a problem in my life, something that to me looked impossible. And at the times that I have been like that, and the Lord would bring these scripture to my heart and mind, and I'd go and read them, 
and then I would do as this lady, I was willing to get down on my knees and crawl, if need be, not for show, but for uh, humility, for humbleness of myself, to let God see and know that I was sorry, that I let myself get in this situation, knowing, as this woman did, if I can just touch the hem. Oh, I'm telling you, that that's faith exercise. If I can just, just touch the hem, and this woman, she had had this uh, blood disease, She'd had it for 12 years. She had spent everything that she had and grew worse all of the time. And she heard about Jesus. You see, church, there's so many things in this passage of Scripture. We know a lot of people. I sat there today at my house and I looked to the right and I saw a family. I looked right below me. I saw another family. I looked beside of me, and I saw two more families. And I looked down this way, and I mean, every way that I turn, wonderful people, wonderful neighbors, have no use for the Lord. Have no use for the house of God. And it troubles my heart. Sometimes I just sit there and, and, and I have been, I have invited one of them. He got in church for just a little while and he got out and him and his wife split up and on and on and on. But it, I feel sometimes like a failure. Like I'm living around all of these people and I've invited them and I've asked them and they are such wonderful people. Just have no use for the house of God. Have no use for the Lord. If they could just see, and that's what I try, if they could just see what Jesus brings into a family. And I've had every one of them. We had a lady right down below us uh, here in the last couple of weeks that her daughter passed away. And no use. No use for church. I don't know whether the daughter did or not. She didn't live there. Uh, She was a a woman, a grown woman, married. But when I think of them, you know, you (laughs) there's just so many of them you'd like to lay hands on and pray for later. Why don't you understand? Why can't you see the goodness of God? Why can't you see that God loves you? What can I do, Lord, to help them see this woman had wrestled this issue of blood for 12 long years and she was dying and grew worse all the time. But what she heard about Jesus, praise His name, that's where it comes back to me. How much is to my neighbors? And I realize well that we're living in the day to where you can invite people to church, but be careful. Because if you, what if they call it, hound them, the first thing you know, they'll turn away. They'll turn bitter. They'll turn, they don't want to hear nothing you've got to say. So we have to do it prayerfully. And sometimes it's hard to do when you think, Lord, you're coming back. You're coming back soon. And not Yancey County, not even the church in Green Mountain, but my little hill and all these people are lost. What can I do? This woman heard of Jesus. And I have tried and still trying, Lord help me, every time I get around them to say something about the Lord, something about what Jesus has done. About the only thing I feel like that I've accomplished is I've got one of them that I love dearly. He's a wonderful person, him and his wife. And uh, I've got him, he, he don't say bad words uh, much around me anymore. So I guess I can take that as a little bit. But he's got one daughter that passed away. 
I don't know why. I've heard several stories. And he's got a son that one of the finest young men that I ever known. And he got wrapped up in, in drugs. And um, I think his daddy just maybe asked him to uh, go away. This woman had church. Look at that. Look at that. In verse 26, and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. Then she heard about Jesus. This is where we come in. They need to hear about Jesus. They need to hear how that Jesus has blessed us. How that Jesus, I, I, I feel like that I don't believe God brought it by no means, but I believe God was in and took care of the situation from beginning to end of Denise having the stroke, having the lung cancer, because now it gives me an opportunity. I can talk to them. I can tell them. This. And boy, when you say lung cancer, people just automatically, you know, oh, like in their minds, how long they got left. You know, it's, it's bad. But God. But God. And that's what I have the opportunity. And I, I don't feel like that it was no accident. All things work together for them, the good. Hey, listen, God gave me a little something, to a big something to use. But God, this woman heard of Jesus and she said, if I can just get to where he's at, if I can just crawl, if I have to, and just touch the hem of his garment, Jesus is going to make it better. Now I want you to notice our verse for tonight. Lord, it helped me for just a few minutes. Uh, this woman got to where Jesus was and touched him. And verse 33, But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Can you just picture the, the cleansing? Can you picture the happiness and the joy that this woman had? She had a blood disease. She was dying. There was nothing that the doctors of the day could do. She was dying. They tried everything, spent everything she had. She was dying. She said, if I can just get to where Jesus is at, she got to where he's at. And now she's trembling, knowing what was done. I mean, she was cleansed. Of this. Hey, listen, do you remember the day that we got saved by the grace of God? Do you remember what it was like when you got up? And boy, you, you, you may not even can explain everything that happened, but there was something happened because you don't feel the way you did when you come down Calvary's mountain. <laughs> you feel better. You feel clean. You feel refreshed. This woman was healed. Listen, listen to this. In verse 29, uh, for she, in verse 28, she said, For she said, If I may touch but his clothes. Now, one or, the, one or two of the gospels says, The hem of his garment, whatever she touched him, I shall be whole and straightway, right then. I believe that's the way that the Lord saves. I, I'm not into this. Uh, well, the Lord touched me and, and I waited a week and, and then I realized I'd got saved and I, then I waited a while longer and the Spirit come in. I'm sorry, but it wasn't that way with me. <laughs> I got saved. I got born again. I got washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I accepted Him as my Lord and Savior and thank God, hallelujah, to Jesus. I've never been the same and I don't want to be the same since that day. Straightway, immediately, this woman, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she even felt it in her body that she was healed. 
This woman had cleansing. Oh, praise God tonight. There's never been. And every time I talk about cleansing, I, I, I really can't help it and probably really just don't want to. But I like to think about Naaman. There goes Naaman down there uh, to see Elijah. And he's, uh, uh, he's, he, he's polluted with this, this disease of leprosy and there's no cure for it. Kind of like this woman. And boy, it took a lot to get Naaman. And that little maid started it. But brother, as time went on, God had somebody waiting in line uh, to tell him, listen, try it, Master. Try it, Lord. Try it right here. Do what they said. And he went down there and he done exactly what Elijah had told him. And he came up and what? His skin was that of a little child. Oh, he went around praising God. I wish to Jesus that you and I, when we are praying for something, no matter what it is, when we see, when we hear, when we know that God is answered our prayer, that we would just come into the house of God, stirred up and excited and thanking and praising Him for everything that He's done. It was God. God did this. And this woman, she was healed. Brother, this woman went from uh, dying to cleansing. She went from hopeless to having hope. Now, now all the things that was going on in her life, all the things that she wanted to do, all the things that she wanted maybe to try and said there's no use. Now I'll tell you, I'll tell you how big a wimp I am. Now, I, I, I'm a wimp. I hate to admit it in the doctor sitting here, but I'm a wimp. And uh, up until about a month ago, I guess, wasn't it, hun? I was to the point to where I was just ready to quit. I hurt all the time. My back, my bones, my everything hurt, my knees. I thought, what is the use? I was ready to leave the church. I was ready to sit down. I was ready to say, Lord, you know everything about me. And I just can't go on. And I told that doctor down there, Wednesday, whenever it was down there, when are you coming back? I said, I ain't, brother. <laughs> I don't want another appointment. I said, I'll come back when I need you. I said, I got aches, but I ain't got no pain. My knees aren't painting anymore. My back is not painting. Yes, I'm shot full of, of uh, whatever that stuff is they shoot you full of, and it may kill me eventually, but I was a dying in pain, so what's the difference? This woman had hope. This woman had healing. This woman had cleansing. Praise His name. This woman had access. Praise God. This woman had ex access to the throne of God. This woman, oh, hallelujah, her life was changed because of the blood disease that now was gone a whole lot like mine and yours when we got saved. Huh. Comfort. All the things that God gives. All the things that He brings and that He gives us. You know, I wonder sometimes how much, how much praise. And I love the doctors. I thank God for them. But I, you know, if you go to one and they don't heal you, why well, they're sorry in Christ. It ain't worth a dime. But if you go to one and they change the way you feel, boy, he's a good doctor. I really like them. They, they, they done me a lot of good. That old doctor down yonder, I never seen him 10 minutes out of the whole time. He popped a needle in my back and he popped two needles in my arm and the pain that I was having ceased to exist. And what about that? He put them big old needles in there. Whew. I looked at him when he started and I was about ready. That thing looked like he had went out the back side of my arm. I don't know what he had in it. Renee might tell you, but it's feel good. Feel good mess. It wasn't drugs. It wasn't alcohol. It wasn't addictive. 
Way on down the road, he said, you may have to come back. Honey, what God gave me, hallelujah, what God gave me was instant. He cleansed me up. He delivered me from the bondage of sin and dying and going to hell. He put joy in my heart unspeakable. He put access to the Son of God. He put understanding of the Word of God. He put in me the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost of God, the third part of the Trinity, and hallelujah forevermore. You think this woman, her life wasn't changed. Her, <laughs> she said, she said, the Lord looked around and said, somebody touch me. And his disciples just, uh, in, 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 in my little old terms, his disciples said, Lord, hey, there are people all over you. What are you talking about? But he knew. He knew. He realized that that woman touched him. He realized that that woman had a need. He knowed. Thank God. He knows, church, every time you bow your head. He knows every time that you're troubled, whether you're at work, whether you're driving down the road, whatever's going on. God knows. He knows how to fix it. He knows when to fix it. He don't always fix it when I want him to. But you know what I have discovered? He gives me grace until it's time for him to fix it. And then he fixes it. And this woman, she, she reached out and she touched his garment. And, and uh, uh, she said, uh, uh, and his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee and says, Thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her. See? What about, li listen to that. Boy, let me just read it slow. And he looked round about to see her. He, he knew who it was. <laughs> you know, that, that little, I don't think I've got it anymore, but I carried it in my Bible for years and years. There's a woman wrote in one time to Billy Graham. And she said, I don't understand you people and them are Baptist churches. She said, I went once and said, uh, uh, you people, every one of you just gathered around up there at the altar. And uh, she said, I don't understand. Said every one of you was a hollering and a praying or whatever you was doing. Said, you really think God heard every one of you? <laughs> yes, I do. He sure did, sir. He heard me. He heard you. He hears every one of us every time we bow our head with a broken and heart and come Christ spirit. God hears. Now see, you can tell me. You can tell Doyle, you can tell everybody in this church. And you know what? There's a chance we might let it slip. I mean, none of us hardly remember. Most of us probably can't remember if we had supper or if we did what we eat. But you know what? God don't. God knows. He knows you and me by name. And He hears Every cry. This woman got exactly what she asked for, but the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her. Jesus knew it was her. Jesus knew what she needed. And Jesus what? He delivered what she needed. In the time. So what do you mean the time? Well, the Bible said she'd spend all she had. She didn't have nothing else to spend. She didn't have nothing else to spend. But well, I just love, I, I just love to read those verses sometimes and read them slow and 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 just read every word. And, and sometimes the Lord just blesses my heart. And he knew her. He knew it wasn't a man. Huh. He knew who it was. When we gather in this altar, or when we uh, bow our heads and our heart before God and we begin to pray. The Lord knows. The Lord knows. And brother, He not only knows, but He knows how, how to minister and when to take care of every need. What about that? Now, isn't that a Savior? That is our Savior tonight. Trust Him. Call on Him. Believe. Let that faith come alive. And then see what Jesus can do in your life and in mine.
Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you again, Lord, this evening, Lord, for this time together and these few words. Help us, Lord, for uh, to do what you'd have us to do. Thank you, Lord, for what you've shown us, Lord, just in these little verses today as we read and we studied. Father, we praise you, Lord, for the joy of, of seeing, Lord, and gaining those little nuggets that God gives us through the Holy Ghost to help us, Lord, to see, to trust you more. Bring everything to you more and more, even if we have to fight the crowd, even if we have to crawl on our knees, even we have to get down and, and Lord, just cry out to you. Lord, we know you can hear us. It's the condition of that heart. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this woman and her faith. Lord, I pray, help each one of us, Lord, that our faith would continue, Lord, to do what's needed to help us to be a better follower of you. Go with us, Lord. Help, touch, bless each home, each family. Lord, touch all the prayer requests. We'll praise you, sweet Jesus, for that you do. Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Anyone have any?